Hey guys, Todd here. Out my bed. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> I thought that my prayers had been answered. This is my boosted nuts uh, combo. So it works in uh, 18350 mode, like so. And it has an extension here, and it works in 18650 mode. This is built by uh, Nuts, uh, a Romanian modder. Big fan of his work. A uh, lot of electronics going on in here. It's uh, made of aluminium, and uh, I love it. Uh, I always have loved his work. Now, the only issue I've ever had with it, and this is something he's now resolved, is that it is... 25 mil in diameter so nothing really uh, looks right on it um, I suppose the closest I mean just to give you an indication I mean you've got the I mean there's a 22 mil see it's there's so you've got a ledge there now is sorted this because he's now got it chamfered around the edge so it's uh, it's flush but uh, I've always been on the lookout for a 24-25mm atomizer, dripping atomizer, which takes me on to what I've just bought and what I'm going to review, which is this thing. It's the DRAXL by Phoenix Mods, uh, which is sold by VaporFreak.de, and links will be appearing or disappearing, whatever. Now, I don't know what's going on and I don't know what's happened, but I hand on heart swear that I saw written somewhere that this was a 23, 24mm diameter. Sure, it was 23mm. It's either 23 or 24 So I was like, yes, have to order one of these because it'll go in my boosted nuts. Lovely. And it just arrived today. Uh, and you know what? It's a 22mm. <laughs> uh, 22mm on the button. Uh, height is not including the drip tip or the 510 connector. Height is 26.4mm. And like I said, it's 22mm uh, in diameter. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. Uh, however, it doesn't look too bad, uh, it doesn't look too bad, and I'm sure it'll look stunning on some of my other mods here. Uh, it's actually nice to have a, a you know, like a 22mm dripping atomizer. Uh, let's find the drip tip that uh, looks semi-decent. Uh, what have we got, what have we got, what have we got? Yeah, there it is on a uh, video just stopped there, didn't it? There it is on uh, a roller. I think it looks quite nice. Take it off that. Uh, we'll pop it on a, a 69. It's got quite a long 510 thread on it. I'm not sure if this is going to... I'll have to adjust the connection, but there it is on a 69 quite nice and what else can we pop it on just for a look-see because these things help uh, there's a an evic which it will not look good on yeah doesn't look right and last but not least we'll try it on See, everything is freezing out here uh, it's snowing like mad um, and just last but not least Oh, that's nice. There it is on my Mancos, which I just reviewed, which I love.
stunning mod. Right, this review is about the DRA XL, uh, so let's get on with it. And that's, uh, God, f five minutes. I've not said anything yet about this. It's a dripping atomizer. It comes with in a little bag like this, Phoenix Mods logo, and it comes with a little Allen key and the dripping atomizer, which we'll get into closer detail in a second. Price wise, right, to me in the UK, it was, dun, 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 it was 19 euros with shipping and tax. It came to a total of 28.9 euros. Uh, I'm not going to work out conversion rates and whatnot just now, but there you go. 28.9 euros it cost shipped to the UK. Uh, I think shipping was by DHL. And it came in the biggest box you've ever seen. No, seriously, it came in that box. Look. <laughs> Save the planet. Kill a tree. Uh, anyway, what we'll do is we'll uh, shift the camera and we'll go in for a closer look. And here we go. The Phoenix DRA XL. Now you can see that it's got, uh, I think it's laser engraved there on the top. It's got a, a little Phoenix. And there's your design. 510 adapter or connector at the bottom I should say and it's got an air hole there and that looks like a one mil to me oh yeah definitely one mil uh, tiny wee air hole and it's a screw fit. No o rings, nothing like that. There we go. Now it's quite substantial, this. It's, it's quite well, you know, it's not a lightweight bit of. Now I'm a big fan of the, the IGO uh, L, you know, as a dripping eyes atomizer. I think it's a great bit of a, you know, for the money. What a great buy. Uh, but, you know, I, I can tell straight away that this is. You know, it's made of heavier, heavy duty stainless steel. It's not as lightweight as the I go. Um, so we'll put that down. And uh, here's the business end. And this is where your Allen key comes in. Because in here is hopefully. And stick this in here. If they've given me the right one, do you know I don't think they have, or have they? I don't like the way this is moving about here. And I can see it here through there, fine. Okay, right. Uh, purpose being is that once you've made your coil up, you're actually supposed to be able to <laughs> oops, move this. and it, you can change the resistance on the fly. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. Now, the only thing, and, and I'm going off basically what I saw on the Vapor Feet website, is that uh, the idea behind being able to change the arm is that you can change the resistance of your working coil. Now, I don't know if it means you can change your resistance, you know, now, or it's fixed, or you can actually change the resistance on the fly. So, you know, you can have, you know, a set, say you had a resistance of uh, two ohms there, and then you could just move that across, and that would reduce it and change the resistance. I don't think so, but uh, we'll wait and see. This arm here, it... You know, there's a fair wee bit of travel in that, and you can see the, the 510 connector moving there. Uh, I'd be, I'm 
you know, it's just simple parts there, but I think I, I'd be kind of worried long term about it. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can actually tighten it down. Which I do be able seem to be able to do. That's a bit better now. Uh, yeah, that's better. Okay, right. Uh, that's enough of that. So let's see if we can wake this guy up and get him vaping. Okay, as per uh, usual requirements, um, we are winging it. Uh, so this is about uh, a nine uh, centimeter long piece of three mil wick. You can use whatever wick you want. It's uh, entirely up to you. Uh, I've got a piece of uh, 0.2 canthal here, uh, which I've already flamed to take out the tension and the springiness. Uh, I'm just going to fold this in half. Like so. And I'm kind of guessing that uh, I'm going to want to put this here. Okay. So, you know, you got a fair amount of coils in there. Uh, full open. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just... Let's just go with the flow and see what we get. Yeah. Uh, Because there's six coils. Can't remember the last time I used six coils. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, that'll go across there quite nicely. Now this should be a high resistance coil. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll pull these tails out like so. And I'll take my my blunt nail clippers so I've just got a couple of tails like that sticking out and we'll feed one through because you've got the, the eyes there and oh, seems relatively easy This one won't be. Looks like I might have to open this one up a wee bit further. Try that again. There we go, we're through. Right. Let's pull this one in tight. Like that. So I've pinned it down with my finger. And uh, we'll screw this down, hopefully. And you're going to have to be careful that you don't push down too hard on the bit with, you know, that it's got the arm on it. I wouldn't want to bend that. Uh, kind of worries me a wee bit that bit, but we'll get back to that. And then we're going to grab the other side, which uh, I've obviously cut too short. Pull that in tight, and I'll we'll tighten that one down. Excuse me, going out of shot here and whatnot. Right, give a little wiggle, a little wiggle again. That's us. So, there we go. There's a, a mammoth coil. God only knows what resistance this is going to come out at. Just going to space these out a wee bit, make them look a wee bit tidier. And that'll do me for just now. There we go. So I've just uh, 
taken the wick and I'm just pushed it down inside there and just distributing it as evenly as I can. And that'll do me just nicely. Uh, right, what do we need now? Uh, we need a device. So I'm going to take a variable voltage device because this is going to be a hell of a high, it's a hell of a high resistance coil. So I'm going to need over four volts. And uh, we'll give this a little blast here. And it is lighting up quite the thing. No problem there. And uh, I think we'll celebrate today. It's one of these days. Uh, and we're going to indulge in some of my favourite pixie juice e-liquid. So a bit of cool orange for you. Lovely. Right. Give me a second. Fucking Evic. Sorry. There we go. See the USB flippy thing on the Evic? It's a pain in the backside. Anyway, because of the resistance of this coil, uh, which is it's now 2.6, uh, I'm up to 5 volts. Uh, I'm vaping this at 5 volts. Um, I don't think I've ever wrapped a coil at that higher resistance, but there you go. Um, I could narrow the posts, take a few turns off, and do it that way. You can wrap it any way you want. Um, here we go. That's uh, just make sure there's the air holes clear. It's quite as a very tight draw on it. I mean, it really is a tight draw, uh, and I'm not convinced that the air hole is lining up for where I would like it to be. Now, uh, just check that. No, the air hole is actually fine. It actually, lines up. In line with the wick. Flavour is stunning. Flavour stunning. Um, the other thing is, I've got a mill of juice in here. I measured it out. Uh, and I just get, with the top cap off, I just get filling up until the well was just below the top of the well and uh, the the wick had soaked up the pile of e-liquid as well and that was a mill in there. Uh, so that, that size of dripping atomizer, uh, I would be surprised if I could get a wee bit more in there as well. I mean that's uh that's a 70% PG, 30% VG, and the vapor is crazy off it, and the flavor is perfect, perfect flavor, no faults there at all. Um, do you know this is actually quite smart? Uh, there's no point in me trying it on uh, any of my 22 mil mods with that coil on it. I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to change it. Right, took a couple of coils off. I'm now down to 1.7 ohms. Um, that's my resistance now. And I found that uh, you know putting it on the, the meter and uh, the the posts further apart at 1.7, I can spin the post round 
and it drops it to 1.5 and then to open it up and it takes it to 1.7 again. So there is a degree there. Whether that's what it's actually meant for, I don't know. Uh, I think it's, you know, if you only want to use X amount of turns, you know, you, you bring the posts in smaller so that, you know, you're not spacing the coils out across this big long between these two big posts. Uh, that's my take on it. Here it is on my Mancos, uh, which is my favourite mod of the moment, and, and I think it actually looks quite funky dory. I think that looks okay. Uh, quite impressed with it. Uh, let's see how it vapes. That's better. It's better for me. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, the Evex growing on me, but uh, you can't beat a mechanical mod, in my opinion, and a lower resistance coil. <sighs> That's bloody nice. That's really nice. Oh, I'm enjoying this. I'll tell you the only thing that's spoiling it. It's not shiny enough. Yes. By the power of Grayskull. There we go, that's a bit shinier. It's still not as I would like it, but uh, a quick buff. It's come up a bit shinier. I haven't done the, the bit at the bottom yet, but I'll get around to that. So, I think that looks awesome. I really do like that. Uh, it's a cracking vape. Uh, now, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's a while since I've tore into the cool orange. Right, my thoughts. Um, if you are into a, a clean look, you know, a 22mm device for a 22mm mod, uh, then I would wholeheartedly recommend this. It's beautiful. Uh, it looks, in my opinion, it looks great on a 22mm mod. The vape is brilliant. It's really good. Um, the whole posts thing, moving the posts thing, I, I get that. Uh, and uh, I was kind of dubious about it at first, but I can see how it works and I can see the benefits of it. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's fine. I, I don't have an issue with that at all. Uh, the air hole, I'm going to drill the air hole out. I think I'm going to want a 1.2. Uh, that is it's really tight. Uh, it's quite a tight draw on it. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll try it with a, just to be sure, I'll try it with a, a bigger mouthpiece. Uh, Still a tight draw, uh, so uh, that's not making any difference. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so, for the money, right, uh, the, the big thing here is, um, do I think that it is better than, say, uh, an Igo, which you can pick up for £10, £11 now? Uh, Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, what did I pay for this delivery again? Was it 29 euros, did I say? Uh, 20, well, just say 29 euros, uh, which comes out at 25 quid. Uh, an extra 15 pound for that. I'd pay it. <laughs> I'd pay it. From an aesthetics point of view, I would pay it. 
from a, a build quality point of view, it's a thicker stainless steel. It's uh, than an I go. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's, it's your decision. From uh, but for me, the aesthetics point of view, it's a hands down winner, and I like the fact that it's bit chunkier in the old stainless steel as well. It's got more substantial feel to it and it just looks bloody great. Uh, the laser etching on the top, I can tell you now, is not exactly the best because just a quick buff and I managed to remove it altogether, uh, which normally wouldn't happen on decent kind of etching. Uh, so this is a very, very light etching on it. Um, so anyway, I've gone on long enough in this one. Um, Excellent service from Vapor Freak. Um, can't fault it at all. Arrived quickly, and packaging was a wee bit overkill. But uh, no, I'm very happy with it. And uh, guys, that's that. I will catch you later. Um, all the best now. Cheers.